Eichel too. It looks so weird. <laughs> So we're here at the Edelbrock Foundry today and we got Charles who's been working here for 15 years. Yeah, 15 years now, yes. And he is the manager here. He's going to show us around. We want to see everything that goes into building the heads that we got from you guys, okay. as well as seeing the process and all the stuff you guys do. Right. So right. we're going to check all that. I, I just, I'm curious to see inside. To be what? honest, I'm just curious to see inside because it's kind of a cool process from what yes, I hear. Yes, it is. A very interesting, complex process, and we're happy to have you guys here and show you the how we make a cylinder head. All right, well, we'll go tour it around. All right, All right. head on in. So there's two buildings here, then. Yes, we have. This is our new building. is our permanent mold foundry, and uh, the other building that's been here for 30 years is our sand foundry. Okay. Yeah. So this is our new permanent mold building. All right, so this building here, this is the newer building, right? Yes, it is. This building was built in 2007, and this is our permanent mold facility. We also do dry sand molding here, and it has our heat treating facility inside this building as well. So here, the first area that we're walking into is the core area. Uh, we have two core machines in this building, and they're running what we call the ice secure process, which uh, are a cold box process. And this process uses a, a two-part resin with a you know, gas catalyst and a mean catalyst and that means what what kicks off the resins that causes it to harden the sand to harden so essentially what you see here in front of us are all the cores that are made on the machines behind me here uh, so we take raw sand and then we add that resin content and then it hardens and takes the shape of the mold which gives us our internal passageways throughout the casting so that all comes that goes into there, yes. comes out as this right here. Exactly. It goes in as raw sand and comes out as something like, like this, which is a water jacket for a small block Chevy cylinder head. This is. I like that you can just pick stuff up and you know exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. And this here, what we're walking up to is our small block cylinder head cell, if you will. This is our automated cell that we run for high volume cylinder heads. So this would be like our small block Chevy heads, our small block Ford heads, essentially. And this is a permanent mold operation that's completely ran by one gentleman. So we set this up for one guy to run it. So the robot, as you can see here, it also does the pouring operation, but it also extracts the casting as well. So we can we have an end of arm tool change, and it'll do a pouring and extraction. Cool to watch. It looks so weird. <laughs> So how hot is the aluminum? The aluminum here is going to be between 1,380 and 1,400 degrees is what we pour at in the permanent mold. The difference between the permanent mold process and the sand molding process is the perm mold is, uh, is a, a steel mold that we pour the aluminum into and it's repeated over and over. The same mold is opened and closed. Whereas the sand mold, we make a unique impression off the pattern and every casting is poured into its own unique mold itself. So, Stay out of his way. <laughs> the operator, what he's doing here, he's prepping his cores for his next cycle. Um, what he has here is this is what we call the cover core, um, and essentially this makes the top of the casting. Uh, this operation is run completely by one operator, so he cleans his own cores, sets them, and then from there the robot takes over and pours the casting and extracts it. So at this way, he's setting essentially the intake port and the water jacket combined as okay. one, two different cores set together. And then he's gonna take the exhaust port and set it in. And then this point he'll blow out, make sure there's no residual loose sand in the, in the casting, in the mold. We have our filtration system here. So essentially, these are uh, silicon carbide filters that the metal runs through to give that one last final filtration before it enters the casting cavity. So now what he's going to do is come over here and it's a two-handle switch and he's going to close that mold there with the cores inside of it. And then he's going to set what we call the top core. And this is, makes the risers and the top of the casting.
He'll use a couple clamps to make teacher the mold doesn't hydraulic as the metal enters. The ladle does a spill off, so essentially it picks up more than enough metal and then spills off the top amount to get all the any impurities. Uh, the way aluminum yeah. melts, all the impurities rise to the top of your melt. I see right. that as stuff when I weld. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can yep. see the impurities just in it. Just right up. Huh? Yep. yep. Yeah, that's fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. So, and then the torches keep everything heat. Yeah, it keeps it. Up it on the, here. Yeah, it keeps basically the mold normalized. Um, it, it wouldn't maintain temp. Some molds require. Every mold's different. It just depends how much mold the heat retains, the wall thicknesses. But yeah, those are on there to maintain the proper temp. If it chills off too much, if it gets too cold, obviously the metal won't run all the way through. It'll end up solidifying too quick. Yeah. Behind us here is a, is a lot of like storage and in-process work, but the large unit you see is the heat treating facility that we put in. So this allows us to do all of our heat treating in-house. Um, what, what you see here is basically a state-of-the-art unit that was bought. It's a continuous throughput unit. So essentially we put it in these baskets, it goes through and comes out the other side. It's all completely automated. It's about 13 hours later. Wow. So what it has is, this first section is what we call our solution oven or the actual heat treating oven where you're bringing the metal up to a thousand degrees and you're essentially releasing the molecules at that moment so that they move. And then you, you keep it, it's very specific, very specific um, process. So we're a thousand degrees plus or minus I think one degree and that has to be held for anywhere to six to eight hours. Um, and then once you get that and you hold maintain that, we then have to quench. And the quenching, what that does is it rapidly solidifies or cools the metal, excuse me, rapidly cools the metal and basically lays all the molecules in the same direction, thus improving the strength of the metal itself. The metallurgical properties are improved by the heat treat process. So, so that's what happens here. And then the quench tank is right in the middle. And then on the other end, you'll see an aging oven. So it then goes right into age and then we bring it right back up to our, uh, our hardness, essentially. So this is about a six to eight hour oven process, and then the other end's between three and four, and it depends on the process that we're using and so forth. So, reason being, you have more materials, so mm -hmm. it's better for machining. Yes. You, you, you have a lot stronger walls. Yeah, denser like material, if you will, yeah. So everything's really dense. I, I noticed, because we picked up our heads yeah. that we got for the Duramax, and it's substantially a bit heavier than the other. Yeah. Yeah, the Duramax, we also do a hipping process, a high, hot isostatic press. Yeah. Um, and that actually even makes the density of the metal, it increases the density of the metal by squeezing down the molecules. Yeah. Essentially, that's what it does under a heat, a heat pressure process. So those, the diesel Duramax heads are even, uh, you're right, more dense than the regular cylinder head yeah. that we have. And it was definitely something to notice when, yes. when I picked up the factory head versus the other bracket, I was like, wow, this is, it yeah. feels solid. <laughs> yes, it does. We, and they added you know, extra metal in there, I think, to improve the, the durability of it as well. So you can see here the quench tank is actually in the floor, so we had to build this large pit. So it comes out and drops in the quench, and we quench within 10 seconds. And again, that, it's important because you want to get from your 1,000 degrees to rapid cooling as quickly as you can so that your, uh, the dendrites and the molecules within the aluminum itself line up and give you much better uh, metallurgical properties. Does that let off some kind of crazy pressure when it does that? Like um, actually, no, it does not. I mean, it, obviously the, well, the water gets really hot quick so you get a lot of boiling action and stuff. Uh, but no, there's, there's not a lot of stress relief, I guess, if you will. No. The one thing we do as well, Dan, is we check, every batch we check hardness so at one casting out of every batch that goes through will be checked for hardness uh, within our lab here. And then we also do bar pulls, which bar pulls are tensile testing. So we make these bars that will then stretch and break to failure. And that gives us the actual properties of the metal at failure. And we do that as well on a daily basis. So we ensure that our metal is of the highest quality uh, through our production process.
So that's basically all we have, <clears throat> all we have here, right? Yeah, this particular building houses, like I said, our permanent mold process and our heat treating process here. And then from there, we have our sand foundry, which we'll go into next. That's right next door then? That's next, right across the parking lot. So we just walked into the core department. It's obviously really loud in here, so sorry about that, but deal with it. This is cool stuff. It's a really cool process, I think. So he's gonna tour us around in here, show us how this is all made. Right now we're looking at these are sand castings, yeah. right? These are core sand cores. So these cores make the internal passageways of all the castings. So if you have an intake port or a water passage, it is made by a core. And the core is is you pour the metal around the core and then you pull the core back out and leave you with a, a space, if you will, within the casting. This is a core for a water pump. So you would have your water inlet here and then this is where the water comes around and this is, would be the shaft. So this is a negative. Everything that you see here will be a space within the casting. Yeah. So that's not what the part looks like. That's what the part looks like on the inside. So this is the process we have here. Uh, what's happening is this is a shell core process. We're taking sand, we put it in the machine. Uh, we have a cast iron mold that we heat up to 450 degrees. We put the sand in there and then it hardens, the, the, the resin hardens against the heat and it comes out with the shape of the mold. And that allows us to make a unique core. So the core process is a five to one ratio process. So for every casting we produce here, our average core production is five. So if we're making 10,000 cores a week, we're making about 50,000, excuse me, 10,000 castings per week. We're making about 50,000 cores per week in this department. That's a lot. <laughs> it's crazy to see how intricate some things are as well. Yeah. This is something, we make something as small as this. This is a, a pipe core for a supercharger where you're, you're basically for a bulkhead fitting for an intercooler. So that would be a through wall right, uh, hole okay. essentially. So we do from that to the ports for also the same. It's a port for a GM supercharger and long runners that we have there essentially. It's fun for me to walk through here <laughs> and look at things and try and guess what everything yeah, yeah. is, you know? Yeah, this is actually, we can show this, not really all, this is an air braking system for freight trains. One of our largest outside customers is a, a, a company that does braking systems for freight trains. So we make several castings, and so we have a large, a lot of metal block castings out there on freight trains, actually, believe it or not. That's cool. So we do like a thousand of these every week for this company. Uh, they buy it quite a bit. Very intricate uh, castings, a lot of internal passageways. That's what it looks like, yeah. So it's all pneumatic. They just move the air through different passageways and that's how they break them. You see how they just throw them down. So that's one of the ports for the diesel head there. Okay. It's got the dual, the dual, uh, I guess it's the exhaust, right? The exhaust has dual uh, two valves. There's, there's it's a four on, valve, right? Four valves for selling. Okay, yeah. yeah. So this, this is the one stack, and then there's another one I think here somewhere. I don't know if they have it made, but basically what we did is we took two of these and put them together to get the four valves within the cylinder uh, on the diesel head. But these are the cores for the diesel so head, right? All here. that's kind of stacked together. Yes, then. it is. So, so you have yeah. multiple pieces that everything gets stacked together to formulate the head. Yes, absolutely. What we do is we take and we do an assembly process with different check fixtures to make sure all the cores are are located in the proper location so we have right wall thicknesses. That's so what I was forth. kind of wondering, with the intricacies of what you're doing, everything mm -hmm. has to be kind of layered together, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, and we can show you some of that here, too. Yeah, sure. Let's just show you some of the other things we do. This is a cold box process, so this is made on a different machine. There's no heat applied. It's a two-part resin with a gas catalyst, um, and then this is solid. So these cores here, we can make them actually shell meaning they take the outside shape, but the inside solid, so we use less material. But this is solid because basically the process. But this is what a core package looks like for what we call an inlet nose for a supercharger. So this is where the inlet, air inlet's gonna be, yep. and this is your shaft coming out for your supercharger drive shaft, which will be coming through here and, and through the nose into the housing okay, itself. Yeah. So that's basically what you see here, you know, throttle body out on this end somewhere. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, this is what's interesting. To yeah, me. I think so too. Everything being so, so stuff like this here, 
This is a basic way we make a, a cylinder head. It takes five cores. We have in here an intake port, an exhaust port, a water jacket, and the slab core. And essentially, this is what we pour the metal around, which gives us all of our internal passages of a cylinder head. That's just so crazy to look at. Like, you don't realize how much goes into it, because yeah, when you get it, you're like, all right, that's a chunk of metal. That's heavy, I'm gonna throw that on my car. Right. You don't realize how many internal passages there really it's are. It's a lot, and it's, yeah, most people don't understand the work that goes into just making the raw casting. Right. Yeah. Really take it for granted when you just buy it online, you're like, oh, I'll just slap that thing on. Yes, absolutely. So this is a, the, the typical type of pattern we would have for one of our manifolds. Uh, this is what they call a cope and drag pattern. So that's the top and bottom. Essentially, the drag being the bottom. Uh, this is the bottom of the casting, and this is the top of it. That's the cope side. The cope always has your risers and so forth, which feeds the casting. So we pour this upside down, essentially. So um, the way we pour it is this is the top, but obviously it's the opposite. Here we have a, a drag mold made up with the core package already in the mold itself, ready to close over. So essentially this is one half of the mold and it'll come and get and do what we call a close over to the cope half, which makes the top side of the casting. Essentially the metal enters here, goes through a last screening process, runs through these runners and then fills the casting from that point. That's what you see the metal path. You can just feel the heat over here. Yeah. So you get closer. So this is our, our furnace that we have here. We keep our metal at about 1,340 degrees. Uh, that's our average pouring temperature. Uh, this, this furnace will hold 10,000 pounds of molten aluminum and it stays molten 24-7, 365. Uh, it's on an alarm system. We have six people that have to rotate alarm schedule because if it goes off on you know, Sunday night at 2 a.m., that person has to come down and relight the furnace. If this was to go hard, it would take probably five days for us to remelt it if it, if it went hard. Yeah, that's so really it's uh, continuously kept melting. It looks cool and it, you can feel the heat from here. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially what we do here is we have a robotic pouring ladle. We use a bottom pour ladle so we pull the metal from about six inches below the metal line so we get nice clean metal. The robot has a level probe on there that um, the controller will set the job that's being run and then that program is, is communicated to the robot so it knows how much metal, how deep to go into the metal bath, how much metal to pull out, the pouring location on the, the mold itself, uh, and so forth. And that's all done through a programming of the robot. So then that first hole is where that screen is. Yes, right? correct. This is what we call the down sprue, and that's where you enter the metal into the mold. This is a down sprue, and this is what we call a riser. And that's essentially what's feeding the, the casting itself. Um, and when you see a riser, there's actually probably four or five risers on this job, but there's only one what we call open, open to atmosphere. And we do that again as part of our gating package to ensure we make a good solid casting. And the reason being is because you want more material because it's gonna shrink. Yes, correct. Aluminum uh, shrinks as it solidifies. So you're always pouring more aluminum than the actual casting is. So typically it's about a 50% additional yield. So if the casting's 20 pounds, you're gonna pour between 30 and 35 pounds of aluminum to get that. Uh, as we like to say in the foundry business, uh, bad riser, good casting. You want that riser to feed the actual casting the, uh, uh, that you're trying to produce. After they've shaken it out without cleaning it up, but this is essentially what it would look like uh, with the risers cut off and the cores taken out of the casting. So not finished, but yet partially. So, Again, you can see the internally that was all made from that core package. You have your water crossover here, uh, which is also made by a core as well. So as these run along, because we, we, when we hopped in here earlier, we saw this running. These yeah. take, what, about a half hour, you said? To get yes, them? from the time the casting is poured until the time it reaches what we call punch out, or where we remove the casting from the flap. Um, is about 30 minutes and that gets the casting to solidify to a solid state and it comes out of the end of the line at a roughly four to five hundred degrees supercharger so this is kind of what a rough casting looks like this is our supercharger housing for our uh, coyote or five liter ford motor essentially so this is kind of what it looks like to us as a rough raw casting so what we've done here is we've made the casting we've taken the core out and we've also removed the gating so at this point, what we need to do is what we call our final deburring, which would be removing all this 
the, the flashing, as it's called, mm -hmm. from the external parts of the, of the casting before we send it on to the machine shop for machining. Man, that's massive. Yeah, it is. It's got, uh, you know, it's, it's got, of course, your intercooler here and then the well, rotor in from the other side, but it's been a very uh, popular application for us. So you can only make a few things a week. Like, you know, I know that you guys have so many products, yeah. but you can only make a few. So Yeah, so what we do is we, we develop a production schedule based on demand. Um, and of course, we categorize our products A, B, C, D, if you will. Um, obviously, the A movers were, were running all probably monthly. Uh, B's maybe quarterly, C's like twice a year, and like a D will make once a year. Okay. So we schedule it that way, but yes, you're right. So we, we can't run everything every week. Uh, the A movers, we may run a thousand castings in one run, and then that'll last us for, say, four weeks. Whereas on a D, we may make a hundred castings, and that lasts us a whole year. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the process that we do. So yeah, any particular week, we're only running certain castings uh, this week, and then you know, some of them may not be run for another year, some for six months. Yeah. Other ones maybe three or four weeks. So right now you see that the, the Mustang guy's got a popular... Yes. Yeah, Mustang well. kits have been good for us. Mustang and the, and the GM, which this is the housing for the GM. So this is what we consider a finished casting for the foundry. Um, this is how it would go to the machine shop. As you can see, you know, it's roughed in. But they do the willow braiding at the at corp at the machine shop, so that's where they put that nice uniform finish on it. Now that we've seen it, like you guys control every aspect. We do. Cool. So these guys are just sitting here cleaning all this up. Yeah. So what here. you see here is they're taking all the additional flash, the extra right. material that we don't want on the casting. They're removing that, and then the, from there it goes on to the machine and shop. And the heat. Yeah, heat treat, and then machine shop. And then that'll go to the machine shop. Yeah. Really appreciate you guys coming out and, and, and seeing our process. We enjoy teaching people about the foundry process within uh, the automotive industry. It's, it's cool to me to see the entire process because I haven't seen anything like this. This is like something that I see in a movie in the 80s. You yeah. know, it's like I, I don't get to see this kind of process with the sand and everything as well. The molten metal, it's really cool. See you guys control every step of the way. Yes. Sir. And we know there's more work that has to be done. That's right. We're only about halfway done with the process. The rest of it ha happens at the machine shop. Yeah.